Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tech Cafe. Time for some more tech news. So the global chip shortage has affected numerous uses of tech, and I think the automotive industry has enough of this. Ford and GM have announced partnerships with some chip makers, including TSMC, Global Foundries, NXP Semiconductors, and Qualcomm, which the companies say opens the doors to joint R&D and manufacturing that could ease the burden of tightened supply lines and can increase the supply of cars with some more advanced features. The announcement didn't mention any specific actions they would take to achieve this, so I want to get your hopes up too high. But there is a reason to get your hopes up high, and that is because Apple is starting to turn their ways around when it comes to repairing your device. They're going to be starting a self-service repair program, which will allow you to repair your iPhone yourself without voiding your warranty. It will come with tools, parts, and a manual. It will allow you to repair displays, batteries, and cameras, which are the main things people have issues with. This is expected to be rolling out to the U.S. in early next year and expanding outside the U.S. in late 2022. They also expect to start doing this with MacBooks too. There has been no price mentioned yet, but this might actually be worth it, considering that it's been a while since we've been able to upgrade or repair our Macs without having to void the warranty. This could be a big game changer for Apple. And this isn't the only big thing that Apple has going on for them as they apparently are starting to work on their own self-driving car with the project name Titan. It is expected to launch in 2025 with a custom Apple chip and with no steering wheel or pedals. Would this even be legal? I mean, think about it. No steering wheel or pedals? You're expecting Apple to take you safely from point A to point B without no issues at all. So if there's an update, and it affects the cars like turning like it did with Tesla, this could be a very bad situation. So if you decide you want it, I'd make sure you have some really good insurance. Then Gamers Nexus reported that their sources say that Nvidia is planning to release a version of the RTX 2060 with an upgrade to 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which has been rumored numerous times over the past year. Gamers Nexus notes it's unclear why a low tier card would get so much VRAM. Asus is releasing a new Creator's Force VivoBook OLED laptops with the GTX 1650 and it will be equipped with GDDR6 instead of GDDR5. There also has been some leaks about Intel's 12th gen Auto Lake mobile CPUs. There is a Geekbench result with the Core i7-2700H which actually performs worse than the 11 800H in a single core performance, but is slightly better than the multi-core. Then we have the 12800H beating the Ryzen 5800. Specs for various SKUs in the lineup have also been leaked. It might be exciting to see what these chips actually do offer considering that the 12th gen desktop version of these chips were honestly a huge game changer to Intel. But who knows, Ryzen might have something up their sleeve they've been waiting to throw at Intel. But also, speaking of Intel, they also have some security flaws. They affect the Pentium, Atom, and Celeron processors that are running the Apollo Lake and Gemini Lake architecture. Which even if you're running a powerful high-end setup, this could still affect you. The good news is, the attacker would need physical access to the compromised machine but it does make it easy for someone who knows what they're doing to steal your security keys. So, if I were you, I would go update your BIOS or from your device manufacturer. Then also, there's some other updates. Like for the Pixel 6 users, if you got a Pixel 6, there's an update Google just pushed out that allows the fingerprint scanner to work more consistently and more reliably. Especially if you have a screen protector on it. If Google hasn't already pushed it out to you yet, then you can still download the update directly from Google. So that pretty much sums it up for this week's tech news. I'm sorry there wasn't a lot of tech news this week and this video isn't as long, 
but I've just been busy working on a different video that I'm trying to have done by next Monday. So stay tuned for that. But anyways, that's it for today, guys. If you guys like this video, you know what to do. Give it a huge thumbs up. Get subscribed down below. Turn that notification bell icon on so that way you can see when I upload the next tech news. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.